Miniatures Grade Small, and today's episode of What's on the Table is just a quick update on my Hungarians. You may have watched my Hungarian starter box unboxing and build, so I have some of the first models from that set on the painting table. Um, one thing I wanted to do was get away from the three-tone camo as much as possible. I know the Hungarians have a lot of three-tone camo, and it's pretty prevalent in the book. But um, there's a couple of alternate paint schemes that I've seen in the uh, Axis and Allies uh, book itself and also online. So I wanted to do kind of a tan um, stug look with some of the large numbers on the side. I haven't sourced where I'm going to get the large numbers from, but as you can see I'm starting to work on the base hull color. This was um, a pr pretty light uh, sand yellow, Vallejo sand yellow, uh, with a um, kind of a sepia wash, GW sepia wash. Uh, and then I'm going to go back and highlight it with the sand yellow again and you know probably edge highlight it a little bit, then call it done until we can get the, the decals figured out. Um, then we have the Zerini, Zerini. Uh, and these guys, I don't think I'm going to go three tone with them. I might just go with this color uh, because that was uh, apparently a color that these were also painted. Um, this is using Vallejo uh, Reflective Green as the base color. And this one obviously would get a Probably not a black wash completely, but a, um, you know, no, oops, no oil in all the edges uh, to, to bring everything out, and then a lighter um, highlight applied to just the, the raised panels and whatnot. Uh, but again, I like that, uh, you can see that, I like that side skirt, which is pretty cool. So uh, I was looking forward to getting my Hungarians out. haven't scheduled a game with them yet, but I figure I better get these guys painted so that if I can get a g uh, game scheduled, they are ready to roll. Now the other thing I did was fire up my printer. Um, Battlefront miniatures can be expensive, and the, um, the starter box is a great way to get into uh, the Hungarian force. It offers um, a lot of cool vehicles, all in plastic, at a really good price point. Um, but some of the other vehicles, their resin and, and metal uh, vehicles like the light tanks and the armored cars and all that um, are a lot more expensive because they're the older, they're not plastic. So um, because I am not a rich man, I fired up my 3D printer and printed out some of those tanks to see how they'd look compared to the, uh, the Battlefront stuff. So the first one I did was um, a medium tank. So this is a, a Turin, or Turin 2, I think, with that turret. Um, all of these uh, files, the STL files for printing, I found on Thingiverse. And, I mean, it's not, for what it is, it's not bad. Since I already have a 3D printer, and resin printing these is um, not very expensive it uses like 40 cents of resin per model um, and I think it turned out decent obviously this is not the same quality as this um, and it's uh, you know that it's it still has a little ways to go I think or using a much more expensive printer um, but for what it is, it'll be pretty good. Now these guys I will camo um, because if you saw my Hetzer review, I have three Battlefront Hetzers and one 3D printed Hetzer and uh, with the camo on those models, it's really hard to tell which one is which. So, um, you know, this is all an all resin model and uh, I think it turned out pretty well for what it is. So I'll be able to add a unit of the uh, Turins there. I also printed out uh, what is this, a Kasaba scout car 
and uh, this one actually turned out really cool. So you can see how they kind of fit in. So I'll probably end up doing 3D camo on these guys and um, maybe the scout cars as well. Because I haven't seen any examples of those guys in just green yet. I'm, I'm sure they probably existed, but uh, where I have seen actual pictures of these guys in just their green and these guys in their, their tan. So I'm kind of, uh, like I said, kind of excited to, to build more of this force and get it out on the table. I did 3D print a whole little unit of these guys. I'm sorry for nudging the camera. Uh, and uh, I printed out a, you know, a couple of these guys to, for a test. And I like them a lot. So for gaming on a budget, um, you know, 3D printing is a, a cool way to, to go. Um, and it's fun too. It's you know, 3D printing. If you watch my 3D printing videos, uh, has its challenges. It's a whole new um, skill set to learn. But once you have that skill set, it's a valuable hobby. Unlike um, Warhammer 40K, which has proprietary models, you can't really always print those out, or um, you know, their, their designs are proprietary. In World War II, this stuff. Is just out there in the public domain. Anyone can build a model of the Stug, and you know, Battlefront or Warlord Games can't say anything about it. That's just <laughs> that's just how it is. Um, so, Battlefront's approach, and I'm sure Warlords too, is is quality. Um, so if you're going to be paying, you know, forty five dollars for five of these, they better be nice. And you know, you can. You can see the obviously the battlefront models are really nice. All right, guys, there you go. Uh, these guys will progress this week, and uh, they'll probably still be on the table next week. Might have another project on there as well, but kind of give you an idea of what I'm working on. We have the Hungarians for Flames of War. Bagration Access and Allies book. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please do consider giving us a like and subscribe. Click that bell to receive notification when we release new content. If you like our Flames of War content, please do check out our Patreon, where patrons get access to an exclusive battle report every month. As always, thanks for watching, and keep on wargaming.